welcome to FM Corner. I'm Danny Coots, your host. Today on our podcast, we're going to be speaking with Mike Hensley. Mike is the president of PMR, which is Professional Manufacturer Representatives. I've uh, been in the industry a really long time. He and I have been friends for decades. And uh, we'll talk and ask some questions today to Mike about uh, the rep side of the business and equipment and hospitality and how that works. Mike, how are you doing today? And thanks so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me, Danny. Doing great. Thank you. Thank you. Let's get started kind of like I usually do. Give me a little bit about your career path. Where'd you start? How'd you get to where you are today? Well, oddly, my brother and I opened up a restaurant when I was a senior at the University of Tennessee. My father was building a little shopping center out in North Knoxville, and we decided we wanted to put something in that center. Didn't know anything about restaurants. But uh, so we opened up that restaurant in like 1977, and um, we did that for four years. And I learned a whole lot, didn't make a whole lot of money, but I had a lot, <laughs> bunch of great friends that I still have and learned a lot about the industry such that I then went to work for the uh, Scruggs, which was the equipment company that I bought all my equipment from. Mm-hmm. And so I transitioned from an operation over to the dealer sales side of things, which gave me a whole nother level of experience and making calls on other end users and other operators. And I, and I did that till I then left there to start another dealership that did uh, chain restaurants. We did a concept called uh, Po Folks. And we did that for, I did that probably for another four years. And then, um, then moved to Atlanta from Knoxville, moved to Atlanta to get into the rep business. So I got to get on that side of the business, working for a manufacturer as a manufacturer's rep um, as an employee of theirs for Duke Manufacturing at that time. And I did that till I then, uh, in 1994, went to uh, PMR and uh, became a partner at PMR in 94 and have been doing that ever since. And of course, uh, PMR is a independent rep group that has multiple brands, uh, Hobart being one, Hatco be another, Duke be another. Uh, but you can tell these are quality high-end brands. So we have built that company from you know, what it was back in 94 to something that is much greater now, since that we now are the reps for like ITW for nine states across the Southeast. And we have uh, 50 salespeople and two uh, test kitchens across the Southeast. That's great. And and we have done a lot of business together. And, and I will say PMR is one of the best, if not the best rep group that's out there. And, and through my career, I've worked with a lot of them. And uh, really good quality folks you have on your team, including yourself, but everybody and and uh, really knows the business. So I think Thank that's you. great. Thank you. What kind of the role, Mike, of a manufacturer's rep? Some of our folks on that may be listening to our call, if they're in facilities and they're not involved in the purchasing of equipment or anything like that, all they do is, you know, basically maintain after it's done. I mean, I don't understand all the roles of what a you know, rep does or could do to help them? Well, that's a great question. People don't understand, I think, or take advantage of the talent that the reps have because I call the the rep standing in front of you just kind of the tip of the iceberg of the type of resource that he might be, in particular the ones that represent quality brands so they can help you make decisions. And I call them application decisions because we feel like we uh, try to be application experts. I mean, looking at your menu and then what you're trying to accomplish and what you're trying to provide to your customers, what's the best piece of equipment for doing that? And so we have test kitchens and, and chefs that allow you to bring in your equipment, I'm sorry, your food with our equipment and test that product. And it doesn't cost anything to do that. And we can also bring in resources from the factory beyond just the reps standing in front of you. <clears throat> and with 50 people on board, we have a lot of different experiences that, that, that could also help you. So we rely on all the people in our company <clears throat> to help you make those type of decisions. I had a situation just yesterday where a facilities management um, representative at a, a very large school system in Tennessee, he made the decision to change from one brand to another based on conversations with our rep going from a what he determined was a lower quality product that he had a whole lot of problem with <clears throat> To a higher end product, he ended up buying Trollson refrigeration as opposed to what he had bought before. But the point was, he needed our resources to figure that out. And it is a super large uh, decision financially. And these guys don't make these big decisions every single day. So they need resources like reps 
And I suggest that anybody trying to make those decisions find a rep that they can trust in their market and use them. And that, and using them for opportunities to put in equipment. Uh, maybe it is brands that you rep and there might be an issue, <clears throat> a particular line or something. That That's a great place to go to talk through it and get some assistance or get help or, you know, have someone that knows the product and, and is representing the product to kind of help you figure out what do you need to do, you know? Well, and, and you know, Danny, first of all, I want to say to you, that thank you so much for all that you've trained me on over the years. You and I have had a long experience, business and personal, but some of the things we've done on the business side of things, I've, I've become super uh, uh, informed and educated about your world and the challenges that you have. And you, you know, you're one of my biggest influences in my in my uh, experience in my life in this industry because when you were at Ruby Tuesdays, you were just you were trying to handle a big monster there, and 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 you wanted my type of help, and you actually trained me as much as I helped you, I think. But I, you can help make decisions on the type of equipment. You can make help the, the facility guy find out where they get their their how they handle the warranty, how they handle the the parts, the service. There's so many things that the rep can provide to you that I'm sure you have to deal with on an everyday basis. And you'll find out real quick who has a sense of urgency about themselves to be able to help you. So I suggest that the facilities guys reach out to these reps. Like I say, it's it's a free resource. Sure, absolutely. And and I give you, you mentioned Ruby Tuesday. I'll give you one quick example. Um, late in my career, but we rolled out ovens that, that we bought from you. And um, great product. And we got out there and we had heat kind of issues. So on kind of the way our line was set up. And so we had a few issues. And so, again, we're rolling out in the middle of this and continuing to roll. But at the same time, we got we got to address this heat issue. And it was you and me, a couple other people from your team, some folks from my team, uh, some of the culinary guys. I mean, everybody kind of together like, OK, what are we going to do? We got to figure something out. OK, now we got a plan. Now we're going to execute the plan and we'll do the plan together. Some of my people, some of yours, whatever we're going to do. And I mean, literally, not exactly, but literally almost in the middle of the night. Okay. We got a plan. And then yeah. now we're going to go ahead with the plan because we got oven shipping. So we're going to catch up where we are and move forward. And that involved, you know, some stainless and different things like that, that, that helped us out. But the beauty in all that was it didn't slow down the production and the shipping. You know, we Ruby Tuesday, we're putting in new ovens and we're going down the line every day. And as soon as we had one hiccup, we figured that out as we were moving along and made an adjustment and then got every, you know, got ovens in every Ruby Tuesday restaurant that function. And most of them are probably there still today. Yeah, I think it's about 750 ovens that we put in there. And I knew back, I can remember back then you were really struggling with the current uh, oven that you had. From a service standpoint, it was time sure. to do something to kind of relieve some of that pain and kind of start this whole warranty process over again with a different product. So it, thank you for that opportunity. And it turned out to be a lesson for all of us. And I think it was a, a, a great example. Sure. Um, besides dining restaurants, I think you mentioned something, but what other types of business is a manufacturer rep involved in besides restaurants? Well, any place that they have food service, any place, a convenience stores, healthcare, prisons, uh, of course, chain restaurants, uh, independent operators, schools. It really doesn't matter. Now, we typically don't spend a whole lot of time on one and two type stores. We have to call on the, the biggest opportunities, whether it be a, a chain or whether it be a, um, a hospital, uh, something like that. Uh, but really, any place that has food service. Uh, and if you once you drive down the street, you drive a mile, you've probably passed a couple of hundred of them. Sure. I mean, they're just, it's just everywhere. And you can be in the vending business. It's just amazing uh, the different places where people eat. So it's just a wonderful industry to be in. So there's a lot, a lot of opportunity for, for reps such as us. Well, and you had mentioned earlier, you do a lot of work in schools, like cafeterias, yeah. right? A lot. Because yeah. a, that's a, there's a lot of opportunity there. We call schools our largest chain uh, because there's just so many of them and their needs are so great. And they basically got a captive audience. They have to feed these these children and should be feeding these children. And they need that help. And the decisions they make are sometimes extremely large. I and mean, they might be making a half million dollar person decision. And they've never even seen one of these products. So they're real dependent upon someone helping them make that decision. Sure. So we, we take we take uh, that extremely serious. Sure, absolutely. 
Give me the best and give me the worst part of your job. Well, you know, one of the best parts is the part right now, meaning developing relationships with people like you that last a, a lifetime and even beyond just work, just to develop these kinds of friendships and and, and to help people like yourself solve complicated, expensive uh, food service problems, uh, problems that you might have. I, I really think that is probably the, the, the best part of the job as far as the worst part of the job is then being able to turn that off and then balance uh, life and work as far as family is concerned. Um, but also another tough part of it is selling the value of the rep to the manufacturer. We're constantly selling our, our services and our value back to the manufacturer because that's how we are paid. Sure. They hire a rep firm based on their reputation, but more importantly, they hire a rep firm based on um, their relationships. Who do they have relationships with to allow them to go call on a Danny Kane's or allow them to call on a, a Chick-fil-A or allow them to call on some of these people? And if you don't have that reputation, if you don't have that trust in the market, they're probably not going to hire you. So there's just uh, that's always a challenge for us, in particular with new manufacturers that may be attracted to hire new reps. So I would say those are the two things. The, develop these relationships, solving complicated problems. But on the downside is, you know, the personal side of things at times and also uh, selling to the manufacturers. Sure. And, and really for a rep, it, you almost have three customers. I, 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 if I'm Ruby Tuesday, I'm the end customer that's buying the product. So I'm a customer of, of PMR in, in some sense. The dealer, if you're buying, you know, you're providing your product through the dealer network and so on. The dealer's kind of a customer. And then the manufacturer, as you just spoke, that makes the product and that you're repping and you're getting paid by, that's your customer too. You really yeah. have three. That, yeah. that you have to, you know, take care of and work with and and so on. That that's and my, a lot. And, my wife, and my wife and family. Well, that's four. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, on the restaurant side, when I was a facility manager, my customer was operations. That was it. The operational people are are my customer. I'm on the service side of the business now, and that never changed. It's still the customers that are you know, using my, the company I'm working with for service. So either way, it's been kind of the same person for me. But in your world, it's really three different entities yeah. that that you have to kind of massage and manage through That's the right. process. That's right. Because we don't, uh, our manufacturers don't sell direct to the end user. We do have to work through that dealer network and we have to respect that network and, and they're competing with each other. So that sure. could get, be extremely challenging and then plus, you know, most in the old days, the, the dealers just kind of stay in their own geography. That's not true anymore. You know, it's a global environment now so that people can buy from and uh, anybody they want to, wherever they want to. So it's, it's a lot of people to keep happy and 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 be treated fairly and, and, and you know, giving them your, your resources. Sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. What do you look for now? customer or a dealer partner, Mike, or the manufacturers that you rep? I mean, I'm sure there's some commonality, but what 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 matters to you prior to making decisions that I'm going to do, I'm going to be a rep for this manufacturer, or I'm going to do business with this dealer? And you may not always have a choice, but, but what, what is the decisions that you're making? What matters to you of who you want to do business with? Well, it's funny because you got, like you say, you got maybe three different customers, but what we're looking from a, a, a dealer partner is concerned. Uh, I want somebody that either I already have a trust level with, or I feel like that I can develop a trust level with, because there's so many things that are done and said that aren't done and said in person that that you that you still have to have that trust what you walk, once you walk out that door. So I need to be able to develop a trust level with that dealer to be able to continue to do business when I'm not there anymore, stand in front of them. So I, I look for people that have that same goal in mind is to find people they can trust and they and they they can't do business with everybody. And I understand that. And they have to do business with people other than me. And I have to understand and respect that. So it, it's just a balance from the dealer standpoint. As far as an end user is concerned, I, I'm attracted and I think my company is attracted to people that do appreciate value. We represent some of the highest end brands in the industry. Mm -hmm. And if we get into a, a strictly a price fight, I'm not ever probably ever going to win. If it's going to be just about the bottom line price, so everybody says, you know, the, you know that that they uh, they like value and want to pay for value, but when it gets right down to it, price is always a factor. But if it's the only factor, 
I probably won't be there long because I'll, I'll never be the absolute cheapest refrigerator, cheapest oven, the cheapest walk-in cooler. We just want, and we don't want to be because we think we offer solutions that that would not make that possible. So I look for people that value that, that value quality, and and make their decision not just on just on the bottom line price, but also understand and respecting purchasing that they have to do what they need to do to get the best price, and and we just got to navigate our way through that that challenging balance is really what that is. Sure. So I look for people that that like the cost of ownership, you know, that that value the fact that over a period of time, and Danny, you know, I've had these discussions over the years, that over a period of time, this will be the best product for me. Sure. So that's the customers I'm attracted to. And hopefully they're attracted to us for the same reason. That's great. And and the name that that you will know, at, when I was young in Ruby Tuesday, Lee Wallace, mm-hmm. uh, who we both know well, Lee Wallace taught me that it was about total cost of business, not the price on the front end. That's a part. Mm -hmm. But what's the total cost that you spent from the day you bought it until the day it it is replaced? And, you know, like you said, you can there's always a cheaper price. I'm in the service end now. Our prices aren't the lowest and you very easily can go call somebody else to work on your equipment. Yeah. And I don't know if that means it'll be good or it'll get fixed for today and you'll be back in a, they'll be back in a week and then another week or, you know, I mean, it's what do you want? But, but, but as you said, people say value, but value has to be not only the front end price, but what's the price of the product and what's the amount of downtime and all the other items that come into play, you know, yeah. and Wallace taught me at a very early age. It's about the total cost, not just the cost to get it in the door. Well, and not every customer appreciates that, and not every customer can afford uh, the best. Let's just call it the best, or even the top two, two or three. So I understand they got to get their store open, and they sure, got to match sure. their bottom line. And so we try to strike a balance with that. And 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 the truth of the matter is, too, we have people now through the relationships over the years that will call us for you know solutions and all that. And and we recommend other products that we don't even represent because we have that type of rep, uh, reputation, but also that type of relationship and trust sure. with that customer to be able to say to you, Danny, Danny, I don't represent this product, but here's the, probably the best product for you. And and uh, hopefully uh, people appreciate that. Sure. Absolutely. What keeps you up at night, Mike? Huh. Well, <laughs> you know, I really, it's gotten to the point to where what keeps me up at night is when I first started PMR, there was uh, six employees. Now there's 50. And that means I have 50 family members, additional family members that have a life that, you know, go through life's experiences like each, each and every one of us. And every one of their life's experiences will somehow touch the rest of us within our company. And we have to, I have to, we have to, as far as managers of the company, have to balance all that. And it could be, you know, sickness, it could be uh, divorces, it could be uh, all kinds of different uh, financial challenges. It could be a bunch of different things, accidents, things that are going to happen to a group of people that you, that you're involved with and, and trying to manage all of that sure. and keep them um, sane and happy and motivated is probably the biggest challenge. Whether it keeps me up at night, I think it's just a shift in uh, what used to keep me up at night was fighting with manufacturers as to showing our value, but we've got ourselves in a position to where I think they do understand our value. And now it's just uh, managing the lives of, of 50 other people. That's great. Great answer. What well, if, if I say it's a school or it could be a restaurant company that's building a new restaurant, whatever it may be, and they're utilizing some of your product uh, products that you, that you wrap and stuff, where, where can a rep come into play sometime during that process to provide some value. So maybe an example of something that goes wrong or they need training. I don't know what the, all that is, but. Well, there's lots of different ways. They It depends on where they are in their life cycle of their restaurant. If they're trying to just, all they got right now is a location and a menu. You know, we, we could start from there and then start help them decide on this is the menu. This is how I want to present this food to the, to the customer. We could help them decide on what's the best product for that. Uh, versus they could be already open and running and they need some help with uh, training, uh, that they've got products that they've got new staff, which who doesn't, 
uh, and training has got to be almost a constant ongoing struggle for these operators. And we have the we have the talent, as I said, like this tip of this iceberg. We've got some unbelievable chefs, chefs, and application experts that can help them decide how best to use the oven they already have, or any new oven that they, I say, oven, any other product they may uh, want to put into their store, and see if it's enough value to them. So we can help them make a lot of decisions before they spend a dime on any equipment. We can first come in there and look at the flow of their restaurant, to see how things are going in that regard, how they might change some things in there. And, and once again, we can pull not just from our 50, but we can pull from all these manufacturers that we represent to find that kind of a, there's another example out there. There's other people doing the same thing or something close to what you're doing, and we can help connect those people. Um, whether that we take them to a different location or we take them to the factory for training, we come to them for training. We're available to do that. Uh, and it sounds kind of weird that that you can, if you bought a car, you can get somebody to come to your house to show you how to drive that car. Sure. But in, in our world, you can find a rep that can help you how best use that particular piece of equipment to get the best result that you want out of it. So I think that a lot of times that is missed, um, that, that that staff is available and, to, and they need to take advantage of it, not just on the front end as far as pricing and where to buy it and who to buy it from, but also how to use it and how to apply it to their menu. I, that's that's great. And you mentioned something I, I will speak about in restaurants called steps and you and I've both done it a bunch of times and it's looking at a line and looking at the way it's set up of a kitchen line and most chain restaurants the line's pretty much the same it, it's you know there's a little changes here and there but for the most part it's it's lined up the same because most of the chains operate the same way in every restaurant and how many times that I've, I can remember going to restaurants and they said we're trying to improve steps I'm trying to pick up five steps, you know, yep. from here to here. Yep. And and unless you're standing there and you're watching it, mm -hmm. sometimes you don't see it. And even if, like, if I'm Ruby Tuesday and I've seen that kitchen line 45,000 times in my life, mm -hmm. I still might not see it. But if I call you and go, Mike, come come with me or or send one of your guys and just I need a fresh look. You know, somebody that doesn't see it every day, that it isn't ingrained in their mind, I could draw the thing at night and tell you where the equipment is and have someone come and look. And we're trying to pick up some steps. What do we ask the questions that I'm not thinking about? You know, the why do you do this? Right. Why is the refrigerator not next to the fryer to pull the fries out to drop? Why are they walking three steps to get, you know, a bag of fries? Yeah, whatever it may be. And that's so much where rep can be where you say, look at this and tell me because I trust you and, and so on. Tell me what it is. What where am I missing something? You know, yep. because to me, I see it every day. So so you kind of sometimes it's hard to, you know, see. But for someone else like a rep who who sees tons of different stuff, they walk in and go. How about that? How about this? Maybe right. this. It's great, and and it's very very helpful. Well, it's just the whole you call them steps or workflow, and and yeah, like you say, if you if you sometimes what you're doing might be you you're doing it because you've done it before. It may not be the right thing, and there might be a piece of equipment that will help with those steps. Sure, or just somebody else, as you say, just another set of eyes looking at it that has different experiences. So, um, yeah, that is critical. And I think that reps are a, not all, uh, meaning not the only, but a resource even in, in that area as far as workflow and steps. Absolutely. Sure, absolutely. Absolutely. The last question, best lesson learned during your career to pass on? Well, you know, it's funny. Um, I've told some of my reps for years, I said, if you just show up and follow up, you might be in the top two. And I hate to take it down to that level, but I mean, it's just so important and so base that you show up and follow up. And and, and it's funny, uh, actually, it was one of your guys that you work with at, at, um, at Ruby Tuesday. He said to me one time, he says, Mike, I just appreciate the fact that that you follow up and you do it with a sense of urgency. And I really think that when salespeople call on you, Danny, or anybody else, or call on operators, they can feel pretty quickly whether that person standing in front of them has a sense of urgency. And I think that you need to, to have a sense of urgency and, and do the show up and follow up thing. 
And it's amazing how far that alone will take you. And then at that point, you just need to say, do what you say you're going to do. And, and I think a lot of people don't do that. And it, it's so base and sounds so base. But I also think that that treating people with kindness and maintaining a sense of humor. Those are the things I've learned. And I know that you and I have spent a lot of time with on the sense of humor side of things. <laughs> maybe you need to spend a little more time on the kindness side. <laughs> but, but I really believe it's almost that base. But also, I'd like to, you know, I want to be sure and acknowledge the the 50 employees that we have that I have at PMR. I'm just once again a little tip of the iceberg of all these people. What fantastic employees that, that I've been able to, to work with and what fantastic partners I've been able to work with. I've just been blessed in so many ways. And then the life's experience I've had with with you, Danny, and with people like you. And I really appreciate that. Mike, that's great. And and here too, I I tell a very fast story, but in Ruby Tuesday days, um after we had came back from being a, in Mobile at Morrison's and having our own equipment company and came back and started talking to Scruggs and stuff. And so, you know, we had some different manufacturers and different products and so on. And you would come um, to our yearly kind of meeting and talk and present. And, and I had a pretty good deal with some of the folks that we were doing business with at the time. And you would present. And and you would come back and you would present again. And and one of the f- most funniest lines that was ever said, you came one time and said, listen, if y'all don't start buying from me today, I'm not coming back. <laughs> and after the meeting, I heard Wallace looked at me and he goes, that's one of the funniest things I've ever heard and stuff. <laughs> and I can remember those conversations of, of Wallace, who was my boss at the time, talking about, he said, man, Hensley, he comes in there and he he's, he's wanting to do work you know and he, he's continuing to push and he's doing it the right way and i think someday there's going to be an opportunity there and as it turned out there was and yes. and thank got you exchanged and we moved over to to you and to pmr and 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 did all that but lots of people might don't do that they come in one time and if they don't get a good feel they're like okay i'm out and mm-hmm. you know that that wasn't what you did you you kept talking about your business the products what it did, what your company could do, and so on. And when that door opened, mm-hmm. there it was. And yeah, and I think that's well, a testament. We, we like to say that if we're not number one in particular to chain like that, if we're not the number one required brand, we better be number two because they're not going out to number three when number one fails. You're exactly <laughs> right. You're exactly right. And and things do change, you know, yes. over time and and so on. So so uh that was great and we had the opportunity to move products and go to things that pmr was a rep for and and utilize in in lots of ruby tuesday like you said and then we did a 750 restaurant rollout you know yeah. and like we didn't get three or four years to roll that out either you know yeah hey here's yeah. the good news you're getting an order for 750 restaurants here's yeah. the other part we got 120 days yeah what time you want to start we had to do it at night. Yeah. And we're yeah. starting tonight. Okay. You got any questions? Okay. Let's go. You know, that is kind of the Ruby Tuesday way. But Mike, I listen, I appreciate you taking the time here, uh, speaking a little bit about reps and what they do and your company. Your, your company does a great job. And for any facility manager out there, you know, when you're having it, maybe you're having issues, maybe you're looking for a new product, maybe you're looking for options. Maybe the product you have in your kitchen doesn't do exactly what you need. Go to that rep. Go go to a rep that represents the product or a different kind of product and talk with them and so on. You know, ask them. Let them help you figure out, one, if you have an issue. Two, maybe there's a better product. You're using this refrigerator, and if you go to this one, you will get what it is you're looking for and something like that. It's a great help and, and should provide information for you as a facility manager. So think about that, take advantage of it. There's a lot of rep out there for every product, everything you do, lots of companies, but go to those people and let them help. They're, they're experts in the field. Why wouldn't you, you know, most of the time you don't go on your own roof, fix your air conditioner, you call the company that fixes the air conditioner because they're the experts. It's kind of the same thing the rep does, that they're providing a role and an assistance to help you. You need to be the one that that takes advantage of it. So, 
Mike, thanks yeah. so much. Appreciate your time. And uh, we look forward to uh, talking to you again on another episode of FM Core. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Thank you,